Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play the MJ with your host, the MJ406. And I have a feeling this is going to be a very strange idea. You guys have seen me play violent games, you guys have seen me play, take, play deep RPGs. Now it's time for something completely different. How about some mindless fun with monkeys? Yes, you haven't been able to tell by the title? Yeah. This is probably going to be the most insane game I've ever I played up to this point. Then again, I've only played four games. That's not the point. We have monkeys running around in balls. We have to stop that evil man. Now, welcome to Super Monkey Ball 2. That's right, 2. Not the first one, the second one. And we're going to start something completely new. Alright. We now officially created data. So welcome. This is honestly a great game for GameCube. It's, you may think of it as childish, but... Well, it may be. It's fun though. We got main game, party game, and options, which I better set these now. You can view replays of previous experiences you saved, which as you can tell I have a few, but I don't want to go over those yet. A play point system, which I'll get into, basically unlocks party games. Rankings for each mode, sound, which I'll set all these up now. See controller, you can even they even allow you to adjust the controls to get everything. I'll turn on auto save because I feel a lot better with auto save on to be honest. I feel a lot safer. Alright, let's go into the main game finally. You have three choices. You have story mode, challenge mode, or practice mode, which isn't unlocked yet because I haven't done a single stage. Alright, let's jump into the story, shall we? Oh, this is going to be really embarrassing. I don't care anymore. Alright. No. Oh, hey, my name fits perfectly. That's beautiful. Alright. Let's enjoy... Alright. Normally, for cutscenes in games, if there's speaking going on, I wouldn't want to say anything. However, you're soon going to find out there's a reason why this game I do not give any shits about involving the dialogue. Oh no, the monkey spear the giant flip! Oh my god, it's a baboon with a weird gorilla wearing a bandana. <laughs> Yes, inconceivable dialogue that you can only read to understand. Except for laughs like that. Hey! You're taking all more bananas! Give them back! You dick! How could you? Gonna hate you even more. You stupid, rich, little baboon, you! Oh! We have to go through mazes to get your bananas back, but can we make it out alive? I don't know! What can we do? Aye, aye! You gotta do something! Oh, God! Hop! Step, jump, jump, boo. Let us cooperate. Yeah, yeah, woo. Magical spell is E E boo. Do you see now why I'm not giving a shit about this dialogue? Because number one, it's absolutely stupid, and number two, they just mostly speak gibberish or say monkey over and over again. While well, I actually say other things, but anyway, okay. So this is how the story mode is set up. This is World War, Jungle Island. We have 10 levels, which you can complete in any order. 
You see the difficulty at the bottom, so it's probably recommend you start with the easier ones. First. More bananas lit up means it's tougher to beat. Although maybe personal preference. Alright, may as well I'll just do these in order though. Let's just start with simple, which basically, here's where I'll teach you how to play the game. Use the control stick to move around. That's all you do. Like there really is nothing simpler about that. And you want to collect bananas so you get your extra points. Although you get more points from completing the level quickly, so you want to both grab a lot of bananas and get through levels as quickly as possible. For those who increase your score, and bananas are just good to collect. You'll see why probably later down the road. Okay, we'll go to the next level. World 1 2. And every level has names. I could go around this whole path, but there's also the idea of a shortcut! Ow! Yes! Shortcut achieved! See, as you can tell, because of the way the physics work with the monkeys being in the ball, you can find way, multiple ways to get through levels. No matter how easy or how hard. If you if you examine a level well, well enough, which you basically need a whole preview, if you just look at it, you can figure out how you want to go across it. Also, in story mode, once you complete a level, you can't do it again. So make sure you do it right the first time, I guess, or... Yeah. Alright, let's go on to the third one. Bumpy. Basically, you can consider, you can consider World 1, like, a good introduction in the game. It goes over a lot of the mechanics you may run into later down the road. Bumpy roads, jumps, straightaway pants. Now for another fun mechanic, switches. World War 4 switches. Ready? One of the switches like this, you can activate something like that bridge. However, some switches you may want to avoid because they'll activate things that'll hinder your progress. Like if I activated that one, that'll deactivate the bridge leading to each of those bananas. So now the level before you... Well, yeah, examine the level before you decide what you want to do. Alright, let's go to 1-5. Oh yes, by the way, you can save the game anytime you want, quit out, and even look up how to play if you somehow don't know what you're doing. Oh yeah, you press the A button to adjust the um, uh, map at the bottom right corner when you're in the stage. I guess I'll take the time to go over extra features since we're, well, we're in World 1. Alright, you can choose to restart the level if you want. You can also view the stage. You can look around, see if there's anything strange about it. You can see it in real time, so if there are like weird obstacles that are around, you can use the... You can look at the stage to see how everything looks. So you can plan ahead of time if you need to. However, I'm not going to do that, because I pretty much know the stage inside now. Conveyor belts! this now. Each stage does present a new challenge. You won't really see the same kind of stage twice. Alright, let's start having some more fun. Floaters! You see, if I press A, you can notice the size change on the um, uh, map in the lower right corner. Of course, if you really just want to get through the stage, by all means, go ahead. Just ignore everything and just go. Sometimes going quickly is a good way to rack up a lot of points. Although, I do like getting bananas. They're very helpful. Ready? Alright, slopes. Ball physics. Use the hills to your advantage. If you couldn't tell, it's hard to run up a hill in a ball because you're in a ball. Balls slide down hills. That's really the biggest tip I can give you about this game. Understand ball physics and how they work on hills and how their friction works and all that. Or lack of friction, however you want to describe it. Oh yes, by the way, if you take more than half the time you're given to complete the stage, 
you only get the amount of time you had left as a score. Because you didn't notice, you get a score based on how much time you have left. If you take less than half the time they give you, they double your score. So completing, completing a level quickly can rack you up a lot of points. Sliders, this is a rank 8 level, so this is probably the hardest stage of this world. For obvious reasons, because if you overshoot it, you can fall! <laughs> However, in story mode, you're giving it a bit of tries. So don't worry if you screw up a bit. In story mode, you can keep playing until you complete the level. With infinite tries, there's no fear. Besides, failure is your best teacher. As some may say. like that. Just try to be precise with your movements. There's one thing I really wonder. Through all this rolling around where they spin around these balls like this, how do they not get dizzy? Like, look at this. Look, he's spinning around. And I'm surprised they can manage to not be sick in those things. Oh yeah, you can get a little replay of the, um, uh, of the stage. If you want to save, after you complete a stage or die in a stage, you can pause during the replay and choose to save it. And that's how you get those saves on there. But make sure you have room on your GameCube memory card, which, oh yeah, this is a GameCube game, I haven't mentioned that. Memory cards, all right, anyway, let's go to Spinning Top. Sometimes there'll be objects that can get in your way, or try to inhibit your progress towards the goal. What should we do? Ignore it. Sometimes the obstacles may present things like bananas for you to get. There's a lot of risk going for it, but if you want to get the bananas, go for it. All right, here's the final stage of World 1, Curve Bridge. This stage is pretty simple. Ah. Well, this stage I can never seem to get to the goal in less than 30 seconds. Sometimes there are stages you just can't do it. You just gotta, you gotta be quick but careful with these kinds of levels. Because if you overdo it, you may get too eager and fall. the end of world one already, although it is the first world, so it's pretty easy. To the next cutscene! You'll get one after every single world. Can you guys tell that all they're actually saying is monkey? Because that's seriously what they're doing. Pretty pathetic. Damn you, Sega. Damn Japanese game companies and their weird ass ideas. Talking monkeys. Oh no, it's a Dr. Bad Boon! Oh yes, he is an obsession with the, um, uh, the girl monkey, Mimi. What? Would this be considered, like, pedophilia? Because I don't believe she's an adult, and I'm pretty sure he is. So now he takes out his, her hatred of him on the village, by sinking the island, supposedly. We don't want to see how strong you are. No! You evil, evil baboon! By the way, very punny names. Badboon instead of baboon. There's also Gong Gong, the gorilla over there. Oh yes, you sound so threatening, hi-hi. 
So if you can't tell, World 2 is going to be volcano themed. Volcano sure looks nice, doesn't it, Dr. Bamboo? Super dynamite time bomb right here. Oh my god, you're going to bomb a volcano. How could you? Hey! How dare you, you evil, evil man! Come on, monkeys! Save the island! And they do a spell like this at the end of every single cutscene. I guess it's their way to encourage spirit? how they solve all their problems. They go to an area and then go through the frickin' mazes before them. Okay, World 2-1, thanks. You'll notice the difficulty jumped up a little bit because, well, World 2. Duh. It's gonna get harder as the game goes, and believe me, it gets tough. There are a few more mechanics we're gonna have to go over in this world, so... There's still some things to learn. We're, oh yeah, we're World 2 Volcanic Magma. Eaten floor. Prepare to deal with holes in the floor because, well, they can be a bitch. Because you're in a bowl, it can be really weird. Damn it. Um, again from the top. Okay, let's try this again. If you take your time, you can maneuver yourself around almost anything. Just make sure you know how to get across narrow passages. Okay, hoppers. This is another thing where Switch is coming to play. For example, notice I hit this switch. I land on this switch. These things go fast. Oh! I may as well redo this because I forgot to show this off. If they're too fast for you, you can hit this play button over here to slow them down. Because you notice that other buttons are fast forward. So if you're having too much trouble going forward when it's, when it's fast, you can slow it down. There's a lot of levels that have that in case you can't go through it the fast way. Oh! These are the best levels. Levels where you get to descend quickly. Coaster. Oh, okay, you notice in the uh, bottom left corner, it shows the uh, level you're doing as well as your speed. Watch his speed. How can you roll 150 miles an hour and be calm about this? You. Why? Why is this fine? The sad thing is, that's not even the worst of it. Alright, let's do Bumpy Chick. Okay. Sometimes you may need to use bumps to get over gaps. Or just use them as a ride. Apparently like what I'm doing. Either way. Just do whatever you can to get to that goal. If I haven't said it already, you, to beat the level, just go through a frickin' goal ring. That's all you have to do. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I think thought I may as well explain it now, in case somebody's wondering, what if there's another way to complete the level? There's not. Oh god, I almost screwed that up. We have over 100 bananas. Sweet. Gravity Slider. Oh, you want to see what quick, what death can be? I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just watch how ridiculous this gets. Look at this. How are they cool with this? Oh, God. What is that? A peak speed of like 350 miles an hour? This is insane. How are these monkeys okay with this? How? 
Oh god, no! Oh god! Okay, I saw 419 miles an hour at some point. Thank god. Oh. Again, don't be afraid to die. Okay, here's another mechanic that's actually a very important one. Okay. I'll hit this on play so I can do this a lot more easily. I don't think you can do it when it's fast. Notice there are three worms here. They all lead to a separate gold flag. I'm going to go after the red one over here. Which is the hardest one to get to. Oh! <laughs> Let's watch that again. It smacked me through. If you didn't notice, my score got increased by 20,000 and got multiplied as well. The red goals are worth the most points because they get you a lot of... Because they're the hardest to reach. They have another purpose in challenge mode, but I'll go over that some other time. Just know, if you want to get a lot of points, go for that. They give a lot of points. Okay. And watch out for objects like this. Because they can smack you to the floor for some reason. You can question this game's logic if you want. Why they smack you through the floor instead of just shooting you through the side, but eh, not much you can do. You should know to avoid these anyway. Oh my god, cat, I will kill you. Anyway, sorry about that. Alright. Wow, we got through World 2 very quickly. Alright. Alternative. I don't know why the whole thing the way it is, but you have the option to hit the fast forward button if you feel like this level goes too slow. Oh god! Which obviously that's not the case for me, because I almost ran off. Again, going for faster ones give you better times though, so you want those points, challenge yourself. To the next cutscene! Getting through all those mazes gets them to the time bomb. Why? I wish I knew. That's baby. They give her dialogue that actually sounds like a baby. You can't take it out with brute force. It's a bomb. Oh yeah, the monkeys actually say each other's names at least. Also, how the frick do they fly in their damn balls? I don't understand that. <laughs> yes, you prepare for the explosion of the volcano. Oh! No, it backfired. Now the hunt for Dr. Badboon continues. Yes, we do. There he is, he's prepared to swim away. Those balls must have special powers. I don't know how they can fly in them. He's quite a fast swimmer, surprisingly. Getting away! Magic spell number three! Let us talk about the ocean and talk our magic spells. Uh, there are times even I get embarrassed by just listening to these guys say that crap. Alright, I think we'll end this episode here. You guys got a good intro to this game. And we already got past two worlds. We still got a bit to go, but we'll get through that. So this is your host, MJ406, and we'll see you guys next time we go through World 3, Under the Ocean. See you then.